Okay, in this lesson we're going to extend our Map Tour app to include data persistence and location awareness. I'm going to begin by saving my project as the template project as Map Tour GPS. Changes to the user interface are fairly minimal. We want to add a new button. This button is going to be called Save Location. We're going to use this button to save locations that we're interested in. Imagine you're walking around uh, a town and you want to add to your list of destinations some particular landmark. You can do that with this button. Okay. I'm going to add a notifier. I'm going to add a location sensor from the sensors drawer. And I'm going to add a tiny DB from the storage drawer. Okay. The purpose of the tiny DB as you know, will be to save permanently the new locations we add to our destinations list. Uh, let's take a quick look at the location sensor. By default, it is enabled, and by default, its time interval is 60,000 milliseconds, which is one minute. Uh, let's change that to 10,000. Okay, so that's every 10 seconds. What this controls is how often the sensor will check for changes in location. And notice the distance interval is set to zero, meaning any minute change will be recorded as a change. Uh, the other thing we want to do is, going back to the button, is we want to disable the button. By default it's enabled. We want it to be disabled when the app starts up. We're only going to enable that button when we've gotten a fix from the GPS sensor. Alright, so these are our changes. Uh, let's go over to the blocks editor now. Let's work first on the location awareness. The location sensor has only a couple of event handlers. This is the main one. This event handler will fire whenever the GPS detects a change in location. Uh, and it will report to you the latitude, longitude, altitude, and speed of the device. In this particular example, we are not going to use any of those elements. We're instead going to use the street address. So I'm going to pull out this and I'm going to change it to the current address. And we're going to simply use the notifier to display that in an alert. Whenever the location changes, this will pop up and it will show the uh, street address of that location. So what else should we do when we notice that a location has changed? Well, the firing of this block will tell us that the device actually has a fix on its location. So it's at that point that we want to enable the Save Location button. So we're going to set button Enable to True. And now that will allow that button to be clicked. Prior to that, it would not be clickable. Okay, so now we can go over to that button and code its button save location click. I notice I've spelled it wrong. Let me change the spelling. Now this is where we want to add the location to the list. We're going to use a, a add items to list block here. And the list we're adding to is the destinations list. And the item we're going to add is this location sensor's current address. So we need to copy and paste this. And this will extend our list. So now let's pause here and start up the app and test this out. Okay, I've got my app running through the companion. And you can see that the current location button is was disabled. Now it's become enabled. And now if I save my current location and then check my destinations list, you can see that my current address has been added. So that works fine. If you have trouble with this, you might want to package the app instead of using the companion and go outdoors with it to test this particular part of it. Even though we've added the new location to the list, if you turned off the app or the device and restarted the app, you will lose that location because it's, it's not saved permanently. It's just in the memory of the app. So what we want to do is we want to add that list of destinations to our TinyDB. So I'm going to go into the TinyDB and get the store value block. And the value I'm going to store is the entire destinations list 
So now I need to make up a tag to use that we'll also use to retrieve that list. And I'm going to just name the tag destinations in all capital letters. It is case sensitive. We have now stored that list in the tiny DB. So now what we need to do is worry about when the app starts up again, getting that list of destinations back again. So we need to work on the initialize block here. I'm going to pull this out for a moment. The first thing we're going to do when the app starts up now is we're going to we want to assign the destinations from the tiny db. I want to get a value from the tiny db, namely the destinations. I'm going to use this tag to retrieve the value. Now, if I'm retrieving a list, then the value I want to get back if the list is not there, if nothing is there, is I want to get back an empty list. I don't want to get back an empty string. Now, I hope you can see that the very first time you start this app, there isn't going to be any destinations list there because we've never stored anything there. And therefore, this could be the empty list. And we don't want to put that empty list into our list picker. Instead, we need to have an if-then-else here and check if that list is empty. So if the list is empty, is list empty? If the destinations list is empty, um, then what we want to do is we want to we want to set the destinations list to this list here. I'm going to leave off this bogus theater element. Initializing the list from our static list of destinations. And now, once we've done that, we will set the list picker to that list after the if statement. So the list picker is either going to be set from the tiny db or from this statement right here. One thing I just noticed is that one thing I forgot to do here is to also set the list pickers elements right here after adding the item to the destinations list. So we want that new location to show up in the list picker. So now time to test this again. Okay, I've started the app up from scratch again. So if I look at the destinations list, I only have three items there. I can save my current location now. And if I check my list again, it has a fourth element there. Let me quit the app now and um, start it up again. So I'm going to go into the companion. I'm going to reconnect. I'm going to reset the connection. I'm going to reconnect. So I'm restarting the whole app, uh, running it in the companion. This would work the same way if you didn't use the companion. There it is. Now if I choose destination, you can see that in, indeed it has saved that address I put in during the last time I used the app. Okay. One other thing I want to show you before we quit here is how to get rid of the database if you want to start over again with your app. If you go into the storage in USB, then you can go into your apps and you can manage the storage for your app. I can do this for the companion. I can clear the data right here if I want to get rid of that database. And uh, I can also do it if I package the app. In my case, I've packaged it as uh, map tour. There it is. I can also clear the data for the app itself. So if you want to clear the data that's in your tiny DB, you can do that. Okay.